Hi everyone, and welcome to another Star Wars Reading Club book review. Today we're going to do a review of Star Wars Tarkin by James Lucino. And I think what I'll do is I'll just start off by saying that I was a big fan of this book. And I know I say that for pretty much all of the book reviews that I've done, uh, but I have to say that I wasn't quite sure that I was going to be doing a purely positive review on this book. I'll just mention that I did read this book uh, in February of 2015, so way back about a year and a half ago. And I don't know what exactly it was. Uh, it was probably due to the fact that, if I can remember correctly, I probably rushed through it a little bit more than what I should have. But I remember being uh, quite disappointed by the book uh, about 18 months ago. Uh, but this time, it wasn't the case. I read it a lot slower. It's not a long book at all. But I read it a lot slower this time and kind of took the time to get a little bit more from it. And after this reading, I just have to say, uh, if I'm going to do a little bit of a, a spoiler-free review up front, um, I would give a big recommendation that uh, this is definitely a book that I think you guys would enjoy. I think what happened, too, is it was a lot closer, the first reading of Tarkin, uh, to my reading of Darth Plagueis by James Lucino. And I think I was you know, so enamored by Darth Plagueis that I was having a lot of expectations for Tarkin as well. Uh, and I think, you know, with the James Lucino connection, and I think I was maybe a little bit disappointed uh, it wasn't a little bit closer to Darth Plagueis. I held that book in such high esteem. But let's get right into the review, and again, to a little bit of spoiler-free information up front. Uh, what you're getting with uh, Star Wars Tarkin, we're about five years after... Uh, the events in Revenge of the Sith, which is pretty interesting because that was the same timeline for Lords of the Sith uh, by Paul S. Kemp. So we're right in that same range where we're about five years into the Galactic Empire. Uh, and what you're going to get from this book is just basically uh, Tarkin's rise from Moth. He's uh, one of the 20 Moths that have been declared by the Emperor. And then his rise to Grand Moth. So it is a very interesting book. You get obviously a lot of background on Tarkin himself, but there's also a lot of really good information with Darth Vader. And I think if I would have uh, tried to remember back to my first reading uh, before jumping into it this most recent time, uh, I didn't think that there was, or remember correctly, that there was this much Darth Vader in the book. There's a lot of scenes with Darth Vader. Uh, at least 50% of the book is uh, Darth Vader and Tarkin. Uh, in scenes together. So I really enjoyed that. You're also going to get a lot of great information with the Emperor as well, and I didn't even remember that he was a big part of this book. So you're going to get a lot of background just with the sort of the big three of the Empire, uh, Tarkin, Darth Vader, and the Emperor. So if you're a big fan of, of the Empire and all the uh, sort of going-ons with the dark side, then you're definitely going to enjoy this book. But I think what I'll do now is get into a little bit more uh, spoiler discussion. So if you haven't read the book, uh, or um, you're going to read the book recently or upcoming and you don't want to be spoiled, I will get into some spoiler discussions right now. But uh, just jumping into the character of Tarkin, again, James Lucino, one of my favorite Star Wars authors, uh, just what he did with Darth Plagueis and then with this book with Tarkin, I think he did a great job just with the character of Tarkin himself. Uh, even though it's five years in, we see that Tarkin is already sort of uh, a higher up in the Empire. Uh, I believe it was stated in the book that he had already been escorted to Geonosis by the Emperor himself and sort of briefed on the Death Star. So he was already brought into sort of that inner circle of the higher ups of the Imperials who did know about the Death Star. And uh, he's already on sent uh, Sentinel base sort of looking after the uh, the Death Star project. But again... We get a lot of really good information just on Tarkin. For example, you know, why his Tarkin doctrine based on fear and his sort of leanings towards the Death Star and why he's so uh, uh, impartial to technology and trying to rule the galaxy by fear. Again, it gives you great information on why he's a technocrat, uh, basically somebody who promotes uh, technology. Uh, James Lucino does a great job just sort of tying in his family history, uh, the Tarkins, and seeing how technology sort of propelled his family uh, on Iriadu, his home planet, just sort of changed that planet from, I guess, 
uh, sort of more less reliant on technology and more of a, a savagery uh, and sort of transformed it into a civilization. So we see how Tarkin sort of develops this point of view where he's uh, sort of promoting technology. But then we also see sort of how he becomes by a new hope, which we also saw in the TV show, The Clone Wars, how he came to sort of despise and hate lawlessness, which was just great again to his great uncle uh, Jova, just sort of putting him through his trials on the Carrion Plateau and then also the carry-on spike. So you really see how Tarkin sort of develops with this point of view, and it's even more of a philosophy, pretty much, a reliance on technology, and then sort of a devotion uh, to sort of the rule of law. So he comes to hate lawlessness. So I thought that that was great stuff. Um, I think in my first reading, I didn't really like the sort of the trials at the carry-on plateau too much. I thought that it was a little bit too... Uh, you know, sort of predictable that he would go through these this hardships and physical hardships just on his home planet. But for whatever reason, again, I really enjoyed those parts on the second reading around. So uh, I thought that that was great stuff. Also, too, just sort of the genius of Tarkin. Again, the Emperor at one point calls him a military mastermind. And I think that you're going to be hard-pressed to argue with that just from what you see in the book. Um, so I think that that was all really great stuff. And I know that uh, sort of one of the points that James Lucino, Lucino adds into the book, just sort of showing sort of the sparks of genius, uh, Tarkin's not, very, he's really not an idiot and kind of not just uh, standing on the sidelines. He's sort of putting together events. For example, just the start of the Clone Wars with the Battle of Geonosis. You see that Tarkin is even suspicious of, well, where did the clone army come out of all of a sudden? Uh, he sort of already at that point sort of comes to the conclusion, well, there's probably a, a group of elite outsiders who are manipulating the events. So I thought all of that was really great stuff for the character of Tarkin and really provides a really clear picture of how he becomes the person we know that he becomes by A New Hope and just why he's sort of promoting the idea of the Death Star and wanting to use it uh, just as somebody who has his reasons, again, uh, certainly not a saint, and definitely the reasons aren't benevolent, but uh, has his reasons why he wants to sort of crush lawlessness and uh, enforce strict adherence to the Empire. So I really liked how Tarkin was portrayed in the book, and I have to say, even a stronger portray portrayal for me was just what James Lucino did for the Emperor. Uh, a lot of times we don't really get a good look into what the Emperor's motivations are in some of the, the newer books, at least for uh, Lords of the Sith. Uh, we saw that he was a, a primary character there, but I really like the look that we saw with uh, just what the Emperor's motivations with all of this was. And James Lucino really sort of hits it that the Emperor is really pushing the Death Star because the sooner that he has the Death Star, then he and Darth Vader can start devoting themselves to sort of uh, more pressing concerns uh, with the dark side of the force. And I thought that that was a great point. It ties into a really nice sort of plot point that was brought forth in Aftermath, where uh, one of the higher-ups in the Imperial Army sort of comes to regret and sort of makes the point that she was against the two Death Stars. So I think we get a really good look from James Lucino here that the Emperor is pushing the Death Star as a means to an end to sort of let him have more of a hands-off approach to the galaxy though so that him and Darth Vader can uh, can start pressing on with what they're they're most concerned about which is sort of un unveiling the secrets of the uh, the dark side of the force and again to it James Lucino again being the author of Darth Plagueis sort of just says that the Emperor doesn't want mere immortality like his master Darth Plagueis wanted he wants influence of an ultimate sort, so more influence in the galaxy, the ability to be able to reshape reality. So I thought that all that was great, and that's really sort of the motivation of the Emperor to try to push out this Death Star as soon as he can. The quicker that it's completed, then he can sort of, uh, he and Darth Vader, can work on what their ultimate goal is, which is to sort of harness the full power of the dark side. I thought that that stuff was just really great writing and great motivations for the Emperor. And then also too, it was really interesting to see that the Emperor, and this was probably sort of the backbone of the entire book, 
whereas the emperor wanted to sort of promote a <laughs> good working relationship between Darth Vader and uh, and Tarkin. And it was something that he wanted to do, and this was really interesting, a sort of a bit of history uh, from James Lucino in this regard. Tarkin had, or uh, sorry, the Emperor had his eye on Tarkin very early on, sort of even pre-Naboo crisis, uh, very early on where he sort of kind of planned for Tarkin to have this high role in what would become eventually the Empire. And he even wanted to promote uh, Tarkin and at the time, Anakin Skywalker having a good working relationship during the Clone Wars. However, it didn't really work out that way, uh, primarily too with uh, Tarkin's trial of Ahsoka. It just didn't come to sort of fruition where Darth Vader and Tarkin sort of recognized each other's uh, sort of abilities to the extent that the Emperor wanted. So again, you really see in this book that the Emperor is trying to promote Darth Vader and Tarkin sort of respecting each other enough to where they can sort of fulfill the grander plans of the Empire. So again, too, like I said, a lot of the book is really uh, Darth Vader and Tarkin working together, trying to sort of uncover a uh, sort of uh, the dissidents within the Empire itself at the time, and then sort of uncover who it was that stole Tarkin's ship. So I really like that. Again, too, we try to see sort of some team building between Darth Vader and uh, Tarkin. But again, too, like I said, you really get the, uh, the feel in this book that the Emperor has great respect for Tarkin, which again makes sense if he puts him, by the time of A New Hope, if he's putting him in charge of the entire Death Star project, and he has sort of control with his Tarkin doctrine. Again, it makes sense that in this book, we see a great respect for the Emperor uh, in regard to Tarkin. He likes his ambition. Uh, he finds him to be very loyal. Obviously, he's, in, he's in, uh, very intelligent and considers him a military mastermind. But there was also sort of a connection between them. And I sort of got the feeling that it was sort of a dark side connection that uh, Palpatine was sort of figuring out. The fact that they had both come from the Outer Rim. And there was sort of a connection that had brought them together. That they would both come to be great men, uh, sort of leading uh, within the galaxy. So I really liked that. And again, too, it was great that even right from the beginning, sort of Palpatine recognizes, even before the events of the uh, the Phantom Menace, that Tarkin is somebody that most likely that uh, Palpatine is going to want to be a higher up in, in the Empire eventually. So some really great stuff just in regard to the Emperor in this book as well. And maybe lastly what I'll do, just before uh, discussing some of my favorite parts of the novel and some of the more uh, interesting bits that you could pull out of it, is just to talk a little bit about Darth Vader. And I found Darth Vader to be a really interesting character in this novel. Just at times, it, it appeared to me anyway, that it seems like his mind was elsewhere, and you're kind of getting the impression from the Emperor that he felt the same way about Darth Vader at times just within his reluctance to sort of work with Tarkin, but just also at times that he sort of felt uh, flashes of light coming from Darth Vader. The Emperor makes that point as well. So what I did was to, just because we're five years after the events of Revenge of the Sith, which is the same timeline that we saw in Lords of the Sith, uh, maybe this, the timeline that I kind of put in my head was that these events took place just before the events of Lords of the Sith, wherein the Emperor then put Darth Vader through his own trial to try to sort of diminish the pull that Vader was having towards the light. So that's sort of how I was seeing sort of Darth Vader throughout the novel. Uh, you know, he definitely was still, you know, his typical badass uh, Darth Vader self during the novel. But I did sort of sense that maybe these, the events that we were seeing in Tarkin were the events that maybe caused the Emperor to put Vader through his trial uh, that we saw in Lords of the Sith, just with their uh, their mission to Ryloth. But also, too, I thought that it was very interesting. It was a good tie-in, and James Lucino did a great job of this, of tying it into uh, what we saw happen between Anakin Skywalker and Tarkin uh, in the TV show The Clone Wars. And you did see Darth Vader very reluctant to sort of respect Tarkin, sort of questioning, uh, you know, well, what trials did he go through? Uh, type of thing with the Emperor. And like I just said, uh, the Emperor needed Darth Vader and Tarkin to start respecting each other. So Darth Vader definitely had an interesting role in this book as well. 
And then maybe just a quick word about the rebel group that we were introduced to in the book, sort of the good guys, uh, if we can term them that. But uh, I thought that their motivations were were pretty good and at least very interesting with uh, sort of Teller being a former Republic uh, military officer and then having witnessed some of the atrocities that Tarkin had, uh, had done, sort of started to rebel into what would become the Empire and then looking to sort of strike back. This is, it was sort of the same role that we saw within Lords of the Sith, uh, just with the, uh, with the individuals on Ryloth, but then also sort of similar to A New Dawn, and just sort of the Rebellion era, very early in the Rebellion era, I should say. Uh, just we see a small group, not a full-fledged rebellion yet, but a small group that wants to take on the Empire, hoping to sort of ignite the flame of rebellion across the galaxy and sort of turn their small actions into what would be uh, later on a sort of a cause that people could get behind. So I thought that that was interesting. Again, uh, being this early in the Empire, again, only five years in, you, they knew and the characters knew. Again, Lucino does a good job to make this a point. The characters know that they're not really going to overthrow the Empire themselves with their actions. They're hoping to do just sort of their small part and then hope to ignite the flame of rebellion later on. Which, again, too, uh, pretty much does happen. So I thought the Rebel, Rebel group was interesting. They had their good motivations. Uh, but again, this book really isn't about them. It's more so about Tarkin, uh, Vader, and the Emperor. But just getting into some of my favorite parts of the novel or some of the things that I found to be interesting along the way. Uh, one of them was just the way that James Lucino sort of set out that uh, the Death Star was having problems sort of meeting deadlines and just sort of having the whole construction of the Death Star uh, underpinning a lot of the plot of the novel. I thought that that was really interesting just because it gave sort of Tarkin uh, his primary motivation just wanting to get the Death Star completed. Uh, but also too it does a good job of just sort of establishing why it was so long uh, for the Death Star to sort of start being built, but then we don't see it operational until uh, A New Hope, which even from this book, if we're five years after Revenge of, the Sith, uh, Revenge of the Sith, then we're still well more than a decade away. So I thought that having sort of the deadlines not be met was a good way of just sort of introducing uh, why it took so long for it to be completed and just adding in the little things like the engineers and scientists arguing about uh, whether or not it should be a particle beam that's used, or arguing about the alignment of the kyber crystals for the weapon. Uh, that stuff was great, and again, too, it really does stress uh, just how difficult it was and why there was the delay. And again, just going into Rogue One, it's probably going to make a lot of the uh, sort of uh, Death Star part of that movie very interesting as well. And I like that we saw that Geonosis was the origin just for where it was being built. So everything just sort of surrounding the Death Star I thought was very good in this novel. Another very interesting part of the book that I found was just the fact that the Emperor's current residence was actually the old Jedi Temple. And this was primarily due to the fact that there was the, uh, the Sith Shrine uh, underneath the Jedi Temple. And of course the Sith Shrine wasn't new to me. I did a video uh, as the non-canon expert on this recently, but that was just a great really great introduction to sort of the transformation of why the Emperor was sort of residing in the uh, Jedi Temple at this time and why it was sort of transformed into the Imperial Palace. And a lot of people didn't know that uh, sort of the Sith Shrine stuff was actually uh, canon and the reason being because it was in this novel. So I thought that that was very interesting. I really liked that sort of the Emperor at times was sort of using the shrine as a sort of area of meditation so very cool stuff just with that but then also too it wasn't just the shrine that was giving uh, the now imperial palace its sort of strong uh, dark side connection to the force there was also too uh, mentioned that the rooms and corridors throughout the imperial palace also had a strong connection to the dark side just because of what darth vader had done in the final days of the clone wars just with his rampage uh, of killing all of the the Padawans and, and the Jedi in the temple. So I thought that that was excellent and again just did a really good job of establishing why it was where the Emperor was now living in the Imperial Palace which used to be the Jedi Temple. So very cool stuff from James Lucino just in that regard. Now probably the most interesting part of the book 
uh, that I found was just the fact that it was made pretty much known by the end. Again, it's sort of framed uh, by James Lucino at times that Tarkin has his suspicions, but I think it's pretty clear by the end that you can kind of conclude that Tarkin does know that Darth Vader uh, is Anakin Skywalker. And I thought that that part was just great. And I didn't even remember it from the first time that I'd read the novel, but it does go a long way just to showing that Again, Tarkin is a lot smarter than just this guy who's just accepting events as they come within the Empire. And it is an excellent callback to just the history that Tarkin and Anakin Skywalker had, as we saw in the Clone Wars TV show. So it does make sense. Again, if we have Tarkin, who's you know pretty much uh, a military genius and probably just a very intelligent person, with all the interaction that he had with Anakin Skywalker and then all the interaction that he had with Darth Vader, he was able to sort of piece and puzzle together the fact that Darth Vader is most likely Anakin Skywalker. And it even makes sense, too, that he... And again, I think the Emperor even sort of mentions this at one point, that it's likely that not only would he then sort of puzzle together that uh, Darth Vader is Anakin Skywalker, that it would only then make sense that because Darth Vader is subservient to the Emperor, that then uh, Palpatine would probably also be uh, his dark side master, or even a, a Sith master. So I really enjoyed that stuff. Again, it is great just to see that there is characters that are, that are paying attention to what's going on around them. And if you have somebody like Tarkin, who sort of watches everything and sort of make me makes mental notes of a lot of things that are going on, if you're going to have a character like that, it only makes sense that eventually they're going to have suspicions that Darth Vader is probably a former Jedi, and then just with little things and the way that they act uh, around each other, that it's probably eventually going to be that Tarkin uh, comes to conclude that Darth Vader is Anakin Skywalker. So I thought that that was great, and I like that James Lucina wasn't scared to even put it out there that, well, yeah, he probably knows that the Emperor uh, is most likely a dark side master of some sort, maybe even Darth Vader's Sith master. So I thought that that was great and a really interesting uh, part of the book too. Now, one of the parts of the book that I was a little bit disappointed about, but was very happy to see that it was included in the novel, was just sort of what was given as the official explanation regarding the attack on Palpatine uh, by the Jedi in his office at the end of the Clone Wars. So I guess the official explanation that people are accepting in the Star Wars galaxy is that members of the Jedi Order sort of turned up to arrest Palpatine and then some sort of duel had ensued where the Jedi had been killed in some method and the Emperor was defaced or deformed in some way and then people just sort of leave it at that and I thought that that was a little bit of a weak explanation for just what people accepted the fact that people didn't look into it any further than that because I thought that we were maybe gonna get just sort of a better understanding of how it was that, you know, Darth Sidious was able to walk away from that without anyone questioning what went on. I mean, if you're going to assume that four people went into the Supreme Chancellor's office, and then four Jedi die, and the Emperor emerges, although deformed, he lives, and then people just sort of take that at face value that, uh, well, you know, it was an attack, and Palpatine just sort of emerged uh, with his life still. I thought that that was a little bit of a weak explanation and maybe people would have looked into it a little bit more than that. But uh, I guess that that's what the official explanation was. But it was nice to see that I think James Lucino probably thought the same thing because he does allow Tarkin to sort of, again, being the very intelligent man that he was, sort of put together the fact that it couldn't have been that simple. It must have been that Darth Vader and the Emperor were probably Sith, and then Tarkin even goes one step further that it's most likely the fact that the Jedi couldn't allow the hero of the Clone Wars, which would have been Palpatine, uh, to sort of emerge as this, this hero uh, who, at the end of the day, was a Sith, uh, somebody who was, you know, the sworn enemy of the Jedi Order, for example. So I thought that that was great. Again, too, we see Tarkin always piecing things together, always sort of being one step ahead of sort of the official doctrine and accepted sort of stories of the galaxy and kind of know a little bit more about what's going on than uh, sort of everyone around him. 
So I did think that the accepted official explanation was a bit weak, but it was nice to see that Tarkin was able to piece together uh, what had happened in regards to the Jedi confronting Palpatine in his office, and just sort of again to just show that he was one step ahead. But I'll just have to say that if the reveal that uh, Tarkin sort of knew who Darth Vader was and that his identity was Anakin Skywalker previously, if that was the most interesting part of the book for me or, or my favorite reveal, then I'd have to, have to say that my favorite scenes were just the ones that took place uh, just having the conversations between Tarkin and Dooku before the outbreak of the Clone Wars. I thought that a lot of this was just fascinating uh, sort of conversation and just did a really good job of just showing exactly what it was that Dooku was doing uh, in between sort of the Phantom Menace and more closer to Attack of the Clones in just sort of trying to bring about the Emperor's plan uh, to initiate the Clone Wars. But I thought that it was great, again, to just the scenes with Dooku trying to persuade and convince Tarkin to bring his home planet of Iriadu into his confederacy of independent states, but even more so just sort of showing what Dooku's role was in the galaxy at that point uh, publicly. I thought that it was very interesting that we saw that Dooku was sort of uh, warning, or maybe even more correctly, it's sort of tipping off Tarkin, just kind of trying to bring him sort of into the fold of what was going on, because it was probably made clear that uh, Palpatine, and more so Darsidious, was sort of telling Dooku that this was probably a guy that we're going to want to uh, to bring into the fold and have as a higher up in the uh, the Empire at some point. But it did seem that Dooku was sort of tipping him off just by saying things that at the end of the Clone Wars, or what was to be the coming war, uh, it's likely that him and Tarkin were going to be at the same side. So even though Tarkin wasn't going to join uh, Dooku's Confederacy of Independent States, he was sort of letting Tarkin know at the end of the day, we're probably going to be on the same side here. And then he was even tipping Tarkin off to things, the fact that uh, that the clone army was going to sort of rise up in some way. And Tarkin didn't know it was a clone army, but he was just sort of wondering, you're pushing this war, well, who's going to fight on the side of the Republic? And Dooku was just saying, like, don't be surprised if there's secret forces that the Republic is, is going to have access to. So again, just what the interaction between Dooku and Tarkin was just fascinating in my opinion, and those were definitely my favorite scenes. But it was nice to know, and you kind of got the, uh, uh, at least I thought the, thought this while reading these scenes, that it was a test just to see what Tarkin's loyalty was. So Tarkin uh, was sort of tested by Palpatine, uh, just with Dooku trying to see if uh, Tarkin was going to stay loyal to the Republic or not. So I thought that these were just great scenes and uh, very interesting just to see Tarkin's reaction to the coming war and then also just see what Dooku was doing and what his role was just as a, uh, a public figure with the Confederacy of Independent Systems. So those are just some of my thoughts and opinions for Star Wars Tarkin by James Lucino. Uh, like I already mentioned, I would definitely recommend this book. It gives a lot of good background uh, for one of Star Wars' more interesting characters, in my opinion. And it is canon, so you do get some information and see what is shaping the official canon. Uh, like I said, some excellent information just in regards to not just Tarkin, but also Darth Vader and the Emperor as well. And that said, again, to let me know, if you guys have read this book, let me know what your thoughts and opinions are were for Tarkin. I'd be very happy to hear them. Uh, if you loved it or if you're uh, disappointed by it, uh, and if I missed anything for sure, what you guys thought were interesting, I would definitely love to hear that. I'm definitely going to be uh, in the comments section uh, just seeing what you guys thought about the book as well. But uh, So that was Star Wars Tarkin. I think what we're going to do is tomorrow aftermath life that comes out which is the second book in the aftermath trilogy so i'm very much looking forward to that i have pre-ordered it and i'm not quite sure when it'll get here but it shouldn't be too far off from the 12th so the next book that i'll do is aftermath life debt and then i think after that what i'm going to do as well is then review the canaan comic series i have the first two volumes and i really want to look um read those books just because right now Kanan is probably my favorite character from the Rebels TV show. But I think what I'm going to do after Aftermath, Life Debt, and then after the Kanan comic series, I think I'm going to jump out of the canon because we have done just canon books up to this point. 
Uh, I think what I'm going to do is read Darth Plagueis. I know a lot of people have mentioned in the comments section uh, that they would like a review just for that book. So I think what I'll do is after the Kanan comic series is just turn to a Legends book. And the first Legends book will be uh, Star Wars Darth Plagueis by the same author of Star Wars Tarkin, uh, James Lucino. So I think you guys can look forward to that. Uh, if you want to make any other uh, suggestions or recommendations, I'd be very happy to receive those as well. But that's the review for Star Wars Tarkin. Like I said, I highly recommend it, and I'd be happy to hear your guys' thoughts in the comments section below. But I hope you guys enjoyed this review. I look forward to talking to you guys again soon.